That back checking was Casey Severo. Centering pass, LaFerriere trying to tip it in from the very top of the crease. Now it's a three on two the other way. Waterloo, hands off, cuts inside. Great stop by the netminder. Scene of hockey, Minnetonka. That's not a cake schedule. They're, they're playing against some stiff competition. Latch tries to slip around Wiley. It's slowed down, but does in, indeed. Now Latch, backhand shot, off the post. It's still loose and somehow kept out. Teams playing with somebody on the blue line that will be playing in St. Cloud, Minnesota, their collegiate career. Lutke and Wiley. Laferriere, toe drags through everybody and scores! Alex Laferriere dangles, slaloms, sweeps through everybody, finds just a sliver of an opening in Glockner. Glockner looked set, but there was just a hair of an opening, and somehow Alex Laferriere was able to pinpoint Put that puck right through him and makes it a one nothing game. 9.32 remaining in the opening period. And Bucks get on top first. Right over the left pad, right under the glove. Hey, hey, what do you say? Well, that's good. No icing is basically what he was referring to. Well, Check in with the officials here in a moment. Shot. Loose and thrown out. Wow. Backhands a pass with authority up to Driscoll. Driscoll plays it deep, then goes after to chase it down himself. Mack, the lone man back, and he blows a tire. Cutting in and off the post. Out. There was just four seconds between him coming out of the JLM gunshot penalty box and the Bucks getting the lone goal of the contest. Now LaFerrier. Leaves it for Mercury, a drive! Kicked out by the right pad of netminder Glockner. Got lost there for a moment. Ludke trying to get it up the left wing boards. Buccaneers got to be careful here. They've got three below the goal line. That means just one lone man up top was Shouty. From the top of the left circle scoring is Cooper Wiley. It's his second goal of the season in his 10th game. And the defenseman gets the Waterloo Blackhawks on the scoreboard thanks to a power play goal. To get a good scoring opportunity, go upstairs and give the Waterloo squad. And now we're going to have a fight at center ice. Fairmouth takes a couple of swings and lands a couple of rights. Then right in front of the Buccaneers bench. And that is going to fire up the troops. And we'll see if the replay picks it up as getting picked up here is Nick Belpedio, the Colgate commit, and Fairmouth has some words for him as he heads to the box and dusts himself off against Waterloo as he was cutting towards the net. This is chipped ahead by Truman. Chupani, toe drags around one man on the forehand, looks to hit Keeker Olsen. Now a shot from the point, and held onto by the netminder and had the whole ice level portion Completely blocked off. Young with not much of a touch but needed to in order to get that ahead to Driscoll. They'll play this ahead. Here's Fowler. Has Young with him. Fowler fires and scores! Slips one past the netminder. Short side right around the blocker. And for Owen Fowler, that's his first goal of the season. And the Buccaneers are back on top. It's 2-1. to one. I stress this time and time and time again. Charlie Glockner probably makes the stop if Owen Fowler is going in all alone. But because Tyler Young is with him, he's got to respect that pass. And quite honestly, the entire time that play was developing up here in the press box, I was expecting a pass. And tangled up there, Wiley with LaFerriere, and it looks like immediately Wiley had to the box. So I'm wondering if that was just a strategic change. Here's Latch, cuts in, fires and scores! Tanner Latch fed from Paul Davey, and the Buccaneers on top, three to one. Waterloo makes a change right after the power play got started, and I'm wondering if perhaps they weren't expecting 
a little bit different of a personnel. So they take off Wiley, and now you got to question it as Latch comes in unabated from inside the left circle, goes high up over the netminder, and for good measure, Tanner Latch. Assisting on the goal, number 42, Paul Davey. Time of the goal, 43 seconds of the third period. Latch his sixth goal of the season, but the Waterloo Blackhawks come right back. And at the bottom of that pile, the goal scorer, number nine, Michael Lestarza, had mentioned that Lestarza was one of the few Waterloo Blackhawks players who had multiple shots on goal, get you out to play some roller hockey and won't let the coaches know. Again, you couldn't tell by the chuckle. Uh, it's the last thing <laughs> we're gonna be doing here in a pandemic. Cutting in on a two on one, Waterloo feeds it over. Glove save by the netminder. Absolute robbery to the glove side of the netminder, trying to feed a pass over there and look for a tough angle shot. That's kicked away. And now Keeker Olsen, backhanded, Clearance attempt, Buccaneers, loose puck, and the netminder has it. And Fires it in deep, Buccaneers will need to change, or touch up rather. Eight seconds left. And Driscoll comes away with it, plays it up and out of the zone. Chupani, three seconds, two, one, and the horn will sound. Buccaneers hold on by a final score of three to two. They get one goal in each period. And that means the game-winning goal for your Des Moines Buccaneers scored here in the third period. It was a power play tally, and it comes off of the tape of Tanner Latch.